Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Nathan. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, bro. You are you're getting a little bit scruffy. I saw your beard is like getting a little bit uh getting a little bit like the gorilla in the background there. Yeah, well, you know, I uh I do a few things really well and growing hair is one of them. So this week we've got on the agenda something that comes up very frequently and it's one of those things that you wouldn't really associate with getting clients, getting success, getting sales, unless you've been in the game for a while. So I'm going to tease it like that and I'm going to hand it over to you. I've said this a lot of different ways and we're live in the Facebook group right now doing this, right? I've said this a lot of times on Friday Night Lives. I've said this a lot of times um, in the different coaching, in the different classes that we teach. It's not them, it's you. Um, There's a lot of cliches that go kind of along this line. Uh, Whether you like it or not, you're getting exactly what you want, right? Um, People tend to get what they deserve. There's all these cliches that kind of go along with it. Um, Getting clients, getting money, finding the perfect mate, um, having shit go well in your life or not is not a function of the shit that happens outside of you. It is absolutely a function of the shit that goes on inside of you with the relationship with yourself. And there's a, there's a spectrum and let me, let me break this down. There's a spectrum on this far end. It's all like super fucking woo. And on this side, it's all super fucking heady and very, very scientific. Right. And awesome. They're different fucking perspectives, right? And, and depending on somebody's point of view or perspective on that spectrum, they might be like me. I've got one foot in science and one foot in, there's something more going on here. Call it whatever you want. I think it kind of meets in the middle, science and religion, science and spirituality. It's the same fucking thing from different perspectives. We, with the relationship with ourselves, create everything that goes on in our world. and today's podcast episode is really about you get what you think you deserve. Um, And I think that's legit. I am who I say I am. I am what I think I am. There's like validity to that. And man, I see so many people in my fucking world struggling with their business or struggling with clients or struggling with vendors or struggling with, it's like, what's the common denominator in your world with all of that shit, you. So I figured what the hell, let's talk about that today. And I'll play with my knife. At the same time, hopefully this doesn't end up with a trip to the emergency room. (laughs) I got super glue. (laughs) Okay, cool. So a couple of things um, that come to my mind when you say this, number one, I've always been the type of person when it comes to like respect, I demand that people respect me. I try to give people as much respect as possible, but I demand that people respect me because I feel like I deserve to be respected. And I've realized that people don't tend to disrespect me very rarely. Um, And this has been in, uh, in jobs. It's been in relationships. It's been in friendships. I just, I I don't believe that I deserve uh, disrespect and I don't get it. And I think that that comes down to a belief system. People can, people can pick, up, pick up on that. But in business, one of the things that I go through with clients, one of the main questions that I really want to get the answer to when I'm writing their sales message for them is, does your prospect believe they deserve this solution? If I'm selling something that's going to help them uh, invest and make 300 times the amount of money that they invest? Do they believe that they actually deserve that? Or do they have negative hangups about that? If I'm writing for somebody who is in the health and fitness, does their prospect actually believe that they deserve to be healthy and and sexy? And if so, it's going to be a lot easier to sell to them. 
If not, it's going to be almost impossible to sell to them because it's not about the solution. It's about what they believe they deserve. In my own, in my own experience, since working with you, this is something that I've had to struggle with, which is, do I deserve recurring income? Do I re- deserve to charge what I think I'm worth? And for a long time, I didn't. Over the last couple of months, I, I made a decision that I deserve better than the struggle that I've been going through. And it almost like clockwork with a little bit of retooling my offer, but really believing that I deserve to do better than I've been doing my entire world is changed around. It's just really weird. So I kind of wanted to get into maybe the woo, maybe the science, but especially when it comes to getting clients and and working with people, how much the belief that you actually deserve good, good clients and you deserve a healthy business and you deserve to be happy serving the people you serve. How much does that belief impact the reality of it actually coming true? It impacts it completely, whether you're science, all head, right? If, if you're all on this end of that spectrum, or if you're all woo, it's, and I said that weird, that was interesting. Um, it's all the same. It's all the same thing. The bottom line is, is, is it's a hundred percent dependent and reliant on what you think you deserve. But I want to, I want to go back and I want to challenge something. You said when you first started that question, that you demand respect from other people. In your own verbiage, in your own language, in your own words in your head, which I call labels, okay, you may think you demand that from other people. That's actually not 100% correct. You demand it of yourself. You demand self-respect of and from yourself. And that's what other people see and that's how they treat you. And then those who don't, you're just like, man, it's not for me. And you move on. Um, It's 100% reliant on what you feel you deserve, period. So how come so many people or do so many people, are are we just looking at this wrong? I know personally, I didn't feel like I deserved to have the success that I did, even though I was doing awesome stuff for my clients, I still had my own mental hangups about it. But there's a lot of people in the, in the jungle and in the world in general, in our world, um, that are saying, hey, I want this, and hey, I can deliver these results, I'm good at what I do. What is not believing they deserve it? How does that show up in their psyche and in their world? Struggling. Struggling with with various things, but let's just, let's just get to the punchline. The reason why people don't do it is one of two reasons. One, they've not actually defined what they want and clearly defined that. And two, they've got head trash and some of that head trash is their own. And some of that head trash, the majority of it is, is what they've assumed or they've concluded or they've taken on from other people from little kid all the way on up. Every experience that we have, we continue to add to the software that plays the tune of this is how my life is. Okay, so there's two things. One, we're all really good at defining what we don't want. When you and I first started working together, one of the first questions I asked you is, if you could fucking wake up tomorrow and had it exactly how you wanted it, what would that be? And you kind of him hot a little bit and you gave me a couple of answers that were typical surface level answers like everybody does. Oh, I want to wake up and have freedom and all this money and blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. That's not actually what we want. That is a symptom or that is a demonstration or that is a side effect of actually living the way we want to. But we're all really good at defining what we don't want because we've got lots of experience that we go, fuck that. Fuck that too. Fuck that. And when we, when we get down to the bottom of it, we go, oh, I want this fucking house and I want that car and I want this pile of money and I want to not do f- shit and I want all these other people to do the work part and I just want to own the business. Bullshit. That's not what you want. Those are all side effects of actually living the life that you want. The second piece, which is the thing where I like playing with people, is the head trash. 
that fucking software, that tape, that record, whatever you want to call it. You've got this internal dialogue that's just always going on. We're always kicking our own ass. Some of it's conscious, the majority of it's not. If people can really define what it is that they want, actually, what is it that you want? I want to impact the world. I want to feel peace and I want to feel calm and I want to fucking get a play with my crayons all goddamn day every day with people that are awesome and have all of my needs met and some of the shit that I want. That's what I want, right? Define it. That's all just off the top of your head. And then the second piece is figuring out why your life is the way that it is. And it comes down to conclusions and assumptions about who you are, what you're worth, how life works for you, how other people treat you, and really digging into that stuff and unwinding it and going, does it have to be that way? Like if I could choose, would I choose it to be a different way? And then a, a simple little process to challenge why you think it is that way for you. And eventually people go, man, Landon, this is awesome. All of that not tactical shit you taught me about getting clients is totally fucking working out. And I've got so many clients that I can't even see straight because you went through what you needed to go through to go, I deserve that. And I deserve that. And when I get that, I'm able to do my fucking awesome stuff and life's amazing. And pretty soon people come out of the woodwork that I never thought would say, Hey, Nathan, would you be interested in writing our copy? And Nathan's thinking, fucking really? Like you guys are the end all be all like me. What? Okay, sure. Let's have that conversation. Right. What, what do you think about this? It feels like there's a lot of programming that's going on, whether it's in school, whether it's in messages that you get from your parents, whether it's the media demonizing successful people, it feels like a lot of times when you say, well, what do you want? And they name off the things that they want. And then you say, do you believe you deserve that? A lot of times people say, well, nobody deserves those things. Mm -hmm. we're, we're taught that people that have those things that we want are bad. And it's, it's unfair that they, that they have those things. So a lot of times, in my opinion, we're trained not to believe that we deserve those things. Mm -hmm. You're talking about exactly what I'm talking about. All of these thoughts that I have in my head about me and myself and I and how life works for me and, and how people treat me and all of that shit, I think is my stuff. The vast majority of it's not, right? We've picked up an assumption here, right? It seems to fit. Yeah, I just had a really shitty experience with these fucking idiots at school. And then on the way home, this guy was yelling and screaming at me because I was like too close to the road and not on the sidewalk. I'm a bad person. I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. We, we don't consciously think most of that. We just, we gather all of these events that happen to us and it formulates this internal dialogue, self-talk that we constantly berate ourselves with, right? And then there's, there's so many pieces, like the, the fucking questions you asked me open up the doors to so many things. Look, here is one main thing we all need to really understand what you said about people that have it like that are all bad. Really? All of them? Really? Well, no, not all of them. Okay. But that's what we say, right? Okay. Well, let's, let's take this turn a little bit different. Um, regardless of what your religious beliefs are, I believe that we were fucking, apes were turned into fucking human beings and were this race that really we've got this natural primitive fight flight response, right? And there's this tiger in the bush and we're always on edge and then fucking caffeine and lights and media and all this shit going on. We're not designed for this, right? Well, when you take that kind of actual thinking brain that's going through and creating all of those chemicals in our body all of the time. And we're reactive and life's moving really fast and we're stressed and we're behind the eight ball and we've got all this shit going on. It's really hard to choose what we want to think and what we want to feel. And because of that, there's so much information. Our brain only actually has the ability to process a very small percentage at any given moment. So we generalize, 
we create patterns of what looks good and what looks bad and what looks good for me and what looks bad for me. And all of that is done automatically. A huge percentage of it. But all of that automatic shit is all based on the software that we've formulated since we were born. Right? I'm stupid. I'm not worthy. My dad thinks I'm an idiot. Right? All of that shit just builds and builds and builds and all of these experiences that we have demonstrate back to us that because that's how we're feeling about ourselves and you get what you put out. You get what you think you deserve, right? By and large, we're going to continue living life based on how we think about ourselves. And we haven't chosen what we actually fucking want but we're really good at defining what we don't want because we've got lots of experience that demonstrates what we don't want. So we constantly think about that. Guess what we get more of? (laughs) I think also things like, I mean, just turn of phrases like um, success changes people or a hard day's, uh, an honest day's work as if getting paid a lot of money to do what you love isn't somehow honest. A lot of times these things are just subconsciously programmed into us and we don't ever, like you said, we're just bombarded with everything. So we just take it for that's the way it is. And we don't ever stop and challenge it. So obviously some of the negative side effects of this is dealing with clients that you hate, um, feeling like it's justified that you hate the work that you do, that everybody hates the work that they do. How do we go about reprogramming some of that stuff so that we're not stuck in that Um, I deserve this crap. I deserve to hate my job. I deserve to hate my clients. I deserve to hate um, my life. How do we reprogram ourselves out of that? It starts by defining what it is that we want. And people go, you keep fucking saying that, but I don't know how to do it. Okay, cool. Here, I'll give you an example. This is an exercise that every one of you that ever hear this should sit down and do. You're going to create four columns. What I will not tolerate from myself or others what I will tolerate from myself or others, what I would prefer from myself or others, what I would prefer not for myself or from others. Four categories. And if you actually sit down and take the time to do this, you're going to start painting a picture of what you really don't like, but you're also able to contrast that with what you would prefer to have. And if you continue going down that rabbit hole, pretty soon you get to what your actual core values are. And your core values that you have have fuck all to do with all of the programming you've gotten from your parents, your teachers, your friends, your neighbors, media, other quote unquote successful people on the internet or offline. And pretty soon you get down to your core values. And then from there, that's where you go, okay, cool. Why is my life not exactly like that? Or why don't I have that? Or why do I not seem to create that in my life? And then you start asking yourself questions about why not? How come? Like, why is my life not like this? And you start going, okay, well, because this is how it's, this is how it goes, or this is what my life's like, or you said it a minute ago, right? An honest day's work. What a fucked up story to put in some little kid's head. And we all had it. Here's the question to ask yourself. Is that mine? Does that belong to me? An honest day's work. Was I the first fucking person to say that? Did I say that to myself one day? I was 14 years old. All of a sudden, I worked my ass off shoveling snow all day. And I, at the end of the day, I was like, damn, that's what an honest, works, honest day's work does. Well, probably not. And if not, then guess what? That doesn't belong to you. Cool. You've got the wrong fucking definition of a hard day's work or an honest day's work, or a good day's work. Create your own. You can. You're a fucking adult. What do you want? Define it. It's that easy. People are like, I don't get it. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. I think think that working with you has helped break some of those for me, but I consider myself to be a very independent thinker, and I still was trapped by a lot of these things. And I'm in the marketing world and I know that these things trap people and it still was hard for me to break free. So it's, I I, I mean, I'm just going to say this as we close, 
if you're somebody struggling with some of these beliefs, I can, I can sympathize with it because um, Me too. I've been through it too. Me too. <laughs> All right, Landon, if people want, actually, do you have any thoughts before we're out of here? Yeah. All of the shit that's in your head that doesn't feel amazing is not yours. It's a trap. <gasps> Don't let that shit in. Pun intended. Seriously. Like, knock it the fuck off. We're all adults. We have the ability to think for ourselves. All the shit that you think you know about yourself, guess what? Most of it didn't come from you. Question everything means literally that. Question what the fuck you think about yourself. I love some of you. I like most of you. I'm fairly certain almost all of you are really good people. Peace out, Cub Scouts. <laughs>